Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to welcome to something a little bit uh, non-standard. This is a guitar that I built rather a long time ago, and we never really properly featured it on the channel. So this is just an overview, a bit of a warning. Said warning being, don't do this at home. Uh, no, it's 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 fine. It's fun. It's cool but there's a hell of a lot going on inside. And it kind of knocked us for six. So, first of all, burn it. Perfect! <laughs> it's a PAF shape. Uh, we've got California Buckeye Burl. We have got a spalted beach body with ebony stripes going all the way through and the neck is a solid ebony through neck. It is a little bit of a weighty uh, yet, well, very comfortable guitar. And uh, here we go, onwards. The California Buckeye Bell had a load of inclusions and things and I have filled every single little one of those with sterling silver. Just because, you know, why not? Yeah, why not? We've got piezo and midi in here from the Graftech system, uh, kill switch, all sorts of bits and pieces. Looking at a guitar is only part of the, uh, only part of the experience. We've got a bound fretboard as well, actually, with the side dots cut through the binding, so it's a very 3D kind of an effect. Uh, I've just taken the back plate off so that you can see what's going on in here. And it ain't pretty. So here we go. There's, there's a hell of a lot going on, and uh, the, caution, the, the, the cautionary tale is Something went wrong. Something went wrong in here, and uh, it took Sam, who was doing the wiring actually, a very long time to figure out what the issue was. It took a lot of work to figure out what the issue was. We've got multiple systems in here. We've got magnetic pickups, which is fine. We've got piezo pickups, which is fine. We've got a MIDI system which is fine if you can get it to do anything musical. And I personally struggle with that. Uh, there's also an intensely cool little kill switch that has actually got its own little toggle switch that says, hey, um, this kill switch either kills it when you push it in or kills it when you push it out or doesn't do anything. I sometimes struggle just to wire up a normal kill switch, let alone that. But the issue was with all of these different situations, with all of these different bits and pieces in, uh, in the instrument, problem solving becomes an absolute nightmare, especially because most of them all go through the same, well, they all go through the same sorts of places. In this case, it turned out that it was a, this gray connection cable. Uh, it's a, it's a multi-cable kind of thing. And that was faulty. This is a Graftech system. They do not come faulty. This is not sustainer. This is high-end, high-quality, high-quality control. Something went wrong. We replaced every single component before we got to that cable. And it sucked. But anyway, that being said, I'm going to put this backplate back on and I'll just walk you through the, the systems. And, and, and this is your cautionary tale. Um, wherever possible, try and test your components uh, externally, if you can. But especially if you're a beginning guitar builder, 
don't overcomplicate your life too much because it's soul destroying when it doesn't work. Absolutely soul destroying. And uh, yeah, there we go. pickups. In fact, I'm going to turn my I'm going to turn my main my lapel mic off now. So you can hear buzz. The a workshop is not the ideal place to do a, uh, a demo, so uh, this isn't a demo. Uh, let's so yeah, neck. Internally, in the back of the guitar, there's an independent micro pot that adjusts the uh, the output of the piezo. So you can match it to your uh, humbuckers. And that little mini toggle there does that. Complicated. I'm not going to plug this into a uh, into a MIDI system. Not a chance. Let's let's show you what we've got. That's your program up down for MIDI. That's selecting MIDI, not MIDI, piezo, etc. All of that. What's going out through your uh, 13 pin DIN? This is a little toggle that controls my kill switch. So in one. Bear in mind we've got the piezo and the magnetic going here. Dead. In this one, everything's off. Until you push that and it's pushed to on. Instead of push to off. And in the middle, nothing happens. Focus. There we go. So that's very confusing, not having that there, but... Isn't that fun? Isn't that just awesome? So that's our, that's our kill. Not easy to do. And then here we've got just our standard controls. So this is our 
magnetic volume and tone. Three bit toggle of course. And that mini toggle is saying, okay, this is our magnetic stuff in in, in and then this here is just the piezo. So our magnetic's doing nothing. Now on top of that, if I had a MIDI system, I wasn't planning on doing this demo, I, or whatever this is, overview, let's call it that. I was not planning on doing this. If I had a MIDI system here, I would plug it through and, and show you what's happening. Uh, but with the MIDI, you can basically control, you can have all of the above and have piano sounds or synthesizers or you name it, all sorts of things. And uh, frankly, just saying that is actually convincing me I should probably give it another go, personally. Because uh, this stuff, this stuff is all fun. And in the end, that's what guitar playing is about. And with guitar building, we get... As luthiers, we push ourselves on a, on a daily basis. There we go, let's turn that down and turn my microphone back on. As luthiers, we push ourselves on a daily basis to be a better builder, to do things either with greater control and consistency and precision, or with greater and greater complexity and uh, more of a challenge. And what will a solid ebony through neck guitar sound like? Is it going to be materially different to a guitar with a um, with a mahogany neck? Uh, is a solid ebony neck worth doing when quite frankly, unless you're looking really close up with a high gloss finish, uh, it looks like you've just painted it something else. Uh, is that extra weight actually worth it? We do these things because we love doing them. And as a musician, as a proto musician, uh, I discounted MIDI guitar myself a long time ago because I'm <laughs> have never been able to get it to do anything particularly musical. My taste in music has changed. My taste in, um, in guitars has changed. And I started this thinking that I was going to make a video saying, hey guys, don't make a guitar this complicated. And in the course of the 10 or 20 minutes I've been filming this, I've come to the conclusion that I'm entirely wrong. You should do this. You should push yourself. You should make a habit of getting yourself out of your comfort zone on a daily basis, because if we are comfortable, then we are boring. And if we're boring, then the reason we got into guitars and guitar building in the first place is a moot point. I don't know about you, I got into guitars because they're sexy. I thought it might give me a girlfriend, truth be told. And uh, I don't think it ever did. How sad. Go forth, make overly complicated, incredibly sexy guitars and challenge yourself, I urge you. Thank you for watching, click like, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you want me or Crimson to build you a guitar like this or anything that you can dream of, challenge us. I'm looking forward to it. See you soon. Goodbye.
Yeah. Somebody's calling me. Goodbye. See you later. Subscribe.